there's all these patterns to get small and start believing in uh, that something's going to go wrong around the corner and that I need to get more done to be okay. But every day when there's that quietness coming into that stillness, there's a remembrance of, some, of the who I am that's not living inside that story. And each time I touch that, that becomes more the familiar truth. And the conditioning becomes something that can be painful, but there's not as much lag time before I go, oh, okay, <laughs> that's not the reality. Probably like a lot of other people, when I'm feeling a lot of pressure uh, to get things done, there will be a repeating thought in my mind of, oh, I better stop meditating and get going on business. And, and it just come, it comes up more regularly when I'm stressed than when I'm not. And so it just takes a little more effort to say, thank you very much, and yes, I'll get to business, but if I don't let myself have this space, I won't remember what really matters. So there's just more rounds of having to recognize that that same set of anxious thought and feeling is there, and in some way say, okay, later. <laughs> just takes a little more effort. And now it's been about eight years that I became aware that I have a genetic disease that affects my connective tissue. So um, my mobility has decreased. I can't do a lot of the physical things that I'm completely crazy for. And it kind of came to a head. It was about six years ago when I was uh, up at Cape Cod with my family and friends, and I've been all my life a complete ocean buff. I mean, I'd be the last one they'd drag out of the ocean at dinner time, and love boogie boarding, love running on the sand, and everybody went off. Two carloads of people went off to the beach, and I had to stay back because I could no longer walk on sand, and I couldn't any longer be in the surf. It was too rough on my body. And I remember when the cars pulled out that that was one of those moments where it was like a profound stab of, of feeling uh, loss and grief. And, and fall, right along with that was this real longing. And the longing was, may I find peace and happiness in this life no matter what. And I remember weeping and sobbing and when it finally quieted down I just kept noticing, okay, feeling this grief, feeling the suffering. This is mindfulness of what was happening. And I remember when it quieted, I just started noticing then what was there. And I, had, I went for a very slow, easy walk with uh, my dog, Chela, on the, on the path along the bay. And all there was was, okay, there's this breath, you know, and there's sky, and there's the sound of the gulls. You know, and there's a little of that kind of aftermath of real um, kind of sore but tender. And I realized in that moment that it's really okay. Like in, when I'm completely in the present moment, when I'm completely in the present moment, it might not be pleasant, but there's an okayness because there's a quality of, of space that has room. And there's a sense that I'm not, again, this self, this victim myself in the story, but I am that wakeful space and that tenderness. And that, that shift in identity that comes in presence I consider a true refuge. And so that was a moment that really stood out as, oh, this practice of meditation, this practice of presence is life-saving. It gives me life. Mm-hmm.